Why would he ever actually be in the helm and in charge? Why would he need to take a chopper back from uh, from Camp David in order to uh, run his his exit from Afghanistan? I mean, it is so in, it's so embarrassing to this nation. It's so embarrassing to the people that fought and died there. And the way he left, and to pretend as if it is not all his fault. If you wanted to leave, get in line. A lot of people did. Anyone who thinks that this is the way we should have left is so blindly political. You're not even paying well, attention. The, pre the president said the Taliban takeover is highly unlikely. He promised us this would not happen just about five weeks ago. Listen. The Taliban is not the, South, the North Vietnamese army. They're not, they're not remotely comparable in terms of capability. There's going to be no circumstance where you see people being lifted off the roof of a embassy in the, of the United States from Afghanistan. The likelihood there's going to be the Taliban overrunning everything and owning the whole country is highly unlikely. Well, uh, he was wrong about all that stuff. Not even close to right. Uh, apparently, uh, the Washington Post uh, posted a story this morning at 3 o'clock in the morning, and it tells the story behind the scenes in the Situation Room last week when things started going south. And it talks about how Joe Biden's decision was guided by his conviction going back more than a, a decade. Uh, the mission in Afghanistan had little chance of success, Joe Biden thought 10 years ago. Now, keep in mind, he supported it when he voted for the war in Afghanistan and Iraq. But when he was vice president, he saw Afghanistan as futile. And then months before... Uh, Joe Biden announced the withdrawal. General Miller, who is the top commander of U.S. and NATO forces in Afghanistan, warned Joe Biden and the White House that a rapid government collapse was not just possible, but was the most likely result of a quick exit. Uh, and in the meantime, the Washington Post says General Mark Milley, who runs the uh, Joint Chiefs, privately advised Joe Biden, don't do it. Listen. But that changed. The Taliban, they use such brutal tactics mm. to enforce their dictatorship. That includes public executions, stonings, whippings. You can't play music. Petty crimes like a theft will result in harsh punishments, including amputations of your hands if you're found, found guilty of these crimes. Women won't be able to work. Women won't be able to go to school. They will reinstate Sharia law. So for he, anyone to say that this is Trump's plan and Biden said I was boxed in, this is the same President Biden that got back into the Paris deal that Trump got out of. He's the same President Biden that immediately had a, a, a conference scheduled with the Iranians to get back into that deal. The same President Biden that reversed the Remain in Mexico policy and every border policy that's been effective. The same President Biden that sat down there with 36 executive orders to, to reverse everything Donald Trump did. But this is the deal that he said Donald Trump cut. Not a chance. If you talk to the Trump officials, it was conditions-based. This is not what they picked. And he picks to leave in the beginning of fighting season. And begging, now now begging OPEC for oil. Sure. Oh, that, Closing yeah. on our pipeline. On top of that. Meanwhile, right. here is Con uh, Congressman Michael Waltz, the first Green Beret to serve in Congress. He is incensed. He predicted it. And keep in mind, they now have our stuff, all our military hardware. They emptied the prisons, most of which were full of ISIS and Al-Qaeda, and now they're back in charge. Listen. This is one of the worst foreign policy disasters in the history of the United States, uh, and we're getting nothing from President Biden and a shoulder shrug from his cabinet. Soon we are going to see the Taliban flag flying alongside that of Al-Qaeda, just as we head into the 20th anniversary of 9-11. At the end of the day, for the American people, we're about to see the reemergence of Al-Qaeda Al 3.0, but it's going to be far worse because now they have access to tons of weaponry, artillery, ammunition, armor, uh, and others that we've essentially, and a, and a massive air base that we've essentially handed them. And President right. Biden is remaining silence on the, silent on this. If you write Jen Psaki for a comment on this, you'll get a message that says, I'll be back in a week. I'll be back next Sunday on the 22nd. Right. And uh, the president will be back in Washington by Wednesday, they say. So in Take the meantime, radio silence. But, you know, going, going to those images, and they're absolutely terrifying of the people running for their lives. Kids, Worse than Saigon. Children? Children Worse than Vietnam. You're right. You're right. Well, here's the thing. All those people... That, 
The good news is uh, the State Department says all of our embassy personnel are at the airport, but the airport <laughs> is a mess because right now all civilian air flights are canceled, and the only hope is for those people uh, to get on some chartered flight to get the hell out of there. Because to your point, Ainsley, you know, with Sharia law and the medieval punishment that they met out, Anybody who has been involved in helping the Americans during the last 20 years is marked for death. Right. And so they are scrambling to get out as soon well, as we they were can. Saying and you know how many people they say they need to get out? 88,000. Wow. We need to get 88,000 people out of that airport but civilian or they're going to die. Been canceled. Civilian flights have been canceled. Some, yep. The video, not this one, but there's a video of everyone running on the tarmac. If you zoom in, you can see children, moms holding their little girls' hands, trying to run to get on an airplane. But Apparently, there are bloody bodies on the ground at the, t at the terminal, and we're reporting this morning five and, people have died. And it's going to get worse. And please don't tell me that anyone planned for this. Well, we thought the eventuality that eventually stood, we, you know, they were talking about dealing with the Taliban government. Really? You watch them go through the Afghan forces like paper mache. Then you scramble in 5,000 military personnel just to secure a border. Then you have to grind up all our intelligence apparatus and intelligence and hard drives rapidly. You take down our flag, get rid of everything American in a matter of hours because you cannot believe how every major city has fallen. This is the worst planned exit in the history of our country. I hope he doesn't have an, uh, his hands on any other military military involvement. But think about the people what America represents, hope and freedom. And these people in Afghanistan say, wait a second, you could have stopped, you could stop them from entering Kabul. You could have stopped them from entering Masary Sharif. You could, you, with the people we have there, with the 8,000 there, we could have stopped, we could have prevented them from actually penetrating the capital. But we walked away. So it makes America and, the, and our ideal of looking for hope and liberty look like a joke. We cannot be trusted. Any future alliance with another country, with another group, no longer has credibility because President Biden has this sense of we don't belong there. We're not sure what our mission is. You know what our mission is? To keep America safe from another terrorist attack. To keep an eye on a region that foments so much violence around the world. We have now removed all that that intelligence, well, all that operating procedure. We've turned over uh, airbase after airbase for no reason and left them all our stuff. Well, the president said uh, you have 300 well equipped Afghanistan troops and an air force against 000. the 75,000 mm -hmm. Taliban. Right. But look what's happening. And they We're didn't, gonna, so he lied, Angela. Are you saying that he lied? Did he really he believe that us when this he said would not that? Happen. The irony is the Taliban will be running Afghanistan. 20 years after 9-11. What's scary is, what does this mean for America in the future? Uh, the uh, New York Post this morning says, Afghanistan will go down in American history as a failure of sim similar magnitude to Vietnam. Where this differs is in its legacy. We don't know yet what new threats might rise from Afghanistan. That's scary. What well, new 9-11s will be planned there. The world is less safe today, President Biden, and that's on you.